Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you guys so much for being so supportive of my Sims content. As you know, I've been playing the Sims series for quite a long time. So this sort of content is something I always kind of wanted to dabble in on the YouTube side of things. So thank you for that, first of all. Second, I am going to be starting a new series. I know the Cottage Living one is going really well, and we've got some good content for that one going at the moment. But I wanted to make a self-sim. And so originally, I was going to have this be a couple different parts. I wanted the create a sim in one and the building in another. Uh, but what I realized when I was watching back some of the footage is that I talk way too much during create a sim. And by that, I mean, I'm nitpicky. I tweak my face too much and I didn't think that that was going to be super incredible content. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to smash them together. We're going to go through the create a sim and I will provide the commentary for what I am doing. Uh, but then we can kind of get through some of the fluff because otherwise it'd be a 20 to 40 minute long video of me just tweaking my eyebrows or my nose or my jawline into oblivion. And I didn't think that that would be the content that you guys necessarily wanted to watch. If you guys do like those long form create a sim videos, please let me know in the comments. But as of right now, that's probably how our system is going to be going uh, as we create more content and we make more sims. I figure that's an easier way to get us into the game faster, but I am happy to do long form create a sims at request as well. Uh, without further ado, let's get to creating a self sim. Okay, to start my self sim, I took a well lit picture of my face in neutral expression facing forward and as a profile with my hair held back and out of the way. Doing this gives me a more accurate representation of my face. It's not cute, it's not social media worthy, but we're going for accuracy here. The main focal points of my face that make it unique are my nose, jaw, and lips. Your nose is the center of your face and creates the base in which the whole thing is built on. An incorrect nose can throw off your creation and look less like a caricature and more unsettling or uncanny valley. My jawline is sharp and rounds to a wider chin, while my lips are full and with a very slight cupid's bow. These features make up my unique face, and I spend way too long trying to perfect them. After I was done with my face, I gave myself a nice haircut and moved on to my body. I added some tattoos that I felt were fitting to the ones I currently have, ran into some broken tattoo custom content, and temporarily shifted gears to my aspirations and traits so that I could save my work in the gallery and restart my game. I set my aspiration to the big happy family aspiration within the family section. There are a lot more traits to choose from now than when the base game came out, and I think I did a pretty good job of setting mine. I went for self-assured, family-oriented, and perfectionist. For my likes and dislikes, I tried to create a balance between the categories and ended up doing all right in that department. After I was done picking out my personality, I saved my sim, closed out, removed the offending CC, and got back to work. I adjusted my tattoos and skin tone, messed with my hair some more, and got going on the outfit section. No, I do not have a six-pack like she does, but your girl's working on it, okay? Most of these outfits are similar to the ones I wear often, so I was able to breeze through them pretty easily. After perfecting our sick digs, we were ready. I created my partner Ethan and our kitties out of recording and headed off to renovate our new home. Hey guys, so uh, your girl's a dumbass and did not unmute her OBS when she started recording the first part of the build by. So I'm here to provide commentary instead of what I was doing and the inspirations behind what I was doing so that you guys aren't just here listening to some music as I montage my building. What I wanted to do with this house was pretty simple. I wanted to renovate it so it looked like new construction without making it too contemporary or too ultra modern because I feel that a starter home needs to look and feel like a starter home. The very first thing that I did was remove all of the furnishings, all of the decor, and we knocked down a wall to provide a more open layout for the home. 
the landscaping was pretty well done so i didn't feel like i needed to put too much attention into the outside of the home which allowed me to focus more on the inside and hone in what i really wanted the closed off kitchen was fine but for such a small space down on the first floor i thought it important to open up the space and create a more open layout so instead of having three separate rooms I merged it into one. The basement design for this home had an outside entry location, and because I wasn't using this for an additional unit, I wanted to remove that, which would be the only landscaping that I will do for this particular build. I changed the front door into a more modern design that still went with the fixtures that were already in place, like the white windows. I gave the wall paint a refresher and added crown molding on the top for most rooms. In order to create a larger kitchen, I moved the side door over to the living room area and then I got started with the cabinets and the large appliances. Originally, I wanted to go for a design where the island of the kitchen would extend out at an angle, providing more open space but counter space available for decorations or workspace. That didn't quite work out as intended, so instead I created a window into the living room to maintain separate walls and rooms without closing out the space. I lamented over decorations to create a more focal point out of that bar space, but eventually I got it. I added a few decorations to the kitchen to make it feel lived in without making it look cluttered. Next on my list was the separate dining area. For this area, I wanted to incorporate one of my favorite designs, which is Japanese home design. In lieu of a traditional dining table, I centered a kotatsu in the area and put a nice area rug underneath. A kotatsu is a coffee table-like seating area with pillows that you can lift the top off and put a blanket down with a heater underneath to keep yourself warm while you eat in the wintertime. They are very comfy and very cute with this space. Next was the decorations for the dining area. There were a few separate paintings from the Snowy Escape expansion pack that I resized and fit to make a mural as the decoration piece. Lastly, I added a nice ceiling lamp to complete the look of the room and moved on. Before completing the space with the living room, I decided to tackle the bathroom instead. I went for a neutral color palette with stone that looks contemporary and modern without looking too sterile. And then it was on to the living room. While I was creating the kitchen, I chose a wood stove to create the centerpiece or focal point for the living room. I decided on a nice curved sectional to allocate the space properly, so the entryway and the living spaces were separate. Unfortunately, I had to make a couple moves, so I moved the staircase going upstairs and into the basement to fit the space better. After moving the stairs, the entryway was no longer cramped and felt more inviting and comfortable. I put a coat rack next to the door and a cute little mirror under the stairs, just to add a pop of decor. While I was in full build mode, I removed the outside entryway into the basement and got back to work making the living room feel homey and comfortable. I tried to extend out the sectional sofa to make it more comfortable with a chase lounge at one of the ends, but it didn't quite work for the space, so I had to remove it and replace it with the original end piece. I added in a neutral palette coffee table and got to decorating the rest of the space. After adding a few homey touches like a plant on the coffee table and a basket of pillows and blankets next to the corner of the sectional, I added a television above the wood stove. In the corner of the living room, I added Toru, our vacuum, and then I went upstairs to place a cat tree where it was accessible for the kitties without messing up the space. Before ending my ground floor escapade, I replaced all of the doors within the home to match the ones that I had replaced originally. I fixed up the outer landscaping just a little bit and I was done with the ground floor.